welcome back. Um, so in this lesson, we're going to look at residuals. And we learned from the other uh, lessons that models are not perfect. So they may have missed something. Um, we need to look at residuals for this. And if you'll recall, we talked about residuals before. A residual is just the difference between the observed values and the predicted, val predicted values. Or, remember E is the symbol for residual, it's observed minus predicted, or actual minus predicted. Let's look at an example. The linear model relating hurricanes' wind speeds to their central pressures was max wind speed equals 1,028.18 minus 0.972 central pressure. Hurricane Katrina had a central pressure measured at 920 millibars. What does our regression model predict for her maximum wind speed? How good is that prediction, given that Katrina's actual wind speed was measured at 150 knots? So first, I need to figure out a regression model that I can use to predict the maximum wind speed, okay? So um, we know Hurricane Katrina had a central pressure measured at 920 millibars. So I'm going to take my regression model, and I'm going to use that to predict what the model says the max wind speed should be. So in place of central pressure, I'm just going to substitute the 920. And when I do that, I get 133.94. Okay, and that's the maximum wind speed, so miles per hour. So my model is predicting that if the central pressure was 920 millibars, the maximum wind speed of that hurricane should be 133.94 miles per hour. However, we know that the actual wind speed was measured at 150 knots. So the model, um, it was off a little bit. Okay, what is it off by? Well, the amount that it's off by is your residual, okay? So let's write a couple things down first here to clarify. Um, the regression model predicts a maximum wind speed of 133.94 miles per hour, or actually, sorry, it's in knots, right? If I remember correctly. Um, for Hurricane Katrina. Now, I want to know how, how much was it off by. So what I'm looking for is the residual. So how do I find it? My residual is my actual or observed, which would be 150 knots minus the predicted. The predicted is the 133.94. When I subtract those, I get 16.06 .06 knots. So what does that mean? It means that the observed speed was 16.06 .06 knots greater than what was predicted. And I know it's greater because my residual is positive. If I had gotten a negative, it would mean that the observed speed was less than what was predicted. So here, if you think about it, my model underestimated what the actual speed was. So residuals help us see whether a model makes sense. When a regression model is appropriate, it should capture the underlying relationship. Nothing interesting should be left behind. So a scatter plot of the residuals should be the most boring scatter plot you've ever seen. It shouldn't have any interesting features like a direction or a shape. It should literally just be all scattered all over the place. It should show the same amount of scatter throughout with no bends or outliers. Okay, here's a residual plot for the roller coaster model. Do you see anything interesting? You shouldn't, okay, because the, the scatter plot of the residuals shouldn't have any interesting features. There's no direction here, there's no shape, okay, because when the re regression model is appropriate, it should capture 
the underlying relationship. Okay, so here, let's make a little note. There's no obvious patterns. So whatever um, information about speed could be captured by the height has already been captured by the regression model. Please pause the video and try the next problem on your own, and then you can unpause when you're ready. Our linear model for Saratoga Springs uses the size in thousands of square feet to estimate the price in thousands of dollars, and there's your linear regression model. Suppose you're thinking of buying a home there. Would you prefer to find a home with a negative or a positive residual? Explain. So preferably, you would want a negative residual. Residual. If you think about a scatter plot, okay, and here we have price is y and size is x. Okay, and let's say our regression line is going to look like this. And let's say um, you the actual price of the home is here, okay. That means when I go to subtract its residual, which would be right here, so here's actual minus predicted. Okay, that's y hat. When I subtract them, you've got a bigger number minus a smaller number. So that's gonna give me a positive answer. That means that you're actually gonna be paying more than what the model predicted. You would want to pay um, you would want a negative residual. So let's say here's the actual, here's the predicted. Now when you go to subtract y minus y hat, you got a smaller number minus a bigger number, which is going to give you a negative residual. You would want a negative residual because it means the actual price is less than what the model predicted. The model overestimated the price, right? So negative and what it indicates is um, it's priced lower than the typical home of its size. You plan to look for a home of about 3,000 square feet. How much should you expect to have to pay? So I'm going to take my linear model, price hat, and I'm going to substitute 3,000 3, in for size. And you end up with $274, $274,410. So that's what the model is predicting that you should be paying for a home that's 3,000 square feet. You find a nice home that's size selling for $300,000. What's the residual? So remember the residual is the observed minus the predicted or the actual minus the predicted. Your actual here is $300,000 because that's what it actually sells for. But the model predicted that you would be paying 274,000 $410. So that comes out to $25,590. That's a positive residual. That's a bad thing. That means you're going to be paying $25,590 more than what you are expecting to pay for. That's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to look at the um, standard error. Have a great day, everyone.